This knowledge clip is about customary international law, one of the two most important sources of international law besides treaties. Um, customary international law can be distinguished from habits. Um, and so states often behave in the same way, um, but this could merely be a habit which is uh, motivated by uh, courtesy, convenience or tradition. Uh, the, the most common example is the rolling out of a red carpet when a, a foreign head of state uh, visits your country. So here we find uh, Nigeria rolling out the carpet for President Obama when he visited uh, Nigeria. But there's no obligation to do so. So customary norms are customary law is of a different kind. And these are habits uh, motivated by a sense of legal obligation. States feel legally required to do what they do. Um, so how is a customary norm formed? How does it come into being? Well, you can uh, liken it a bit to the way a path is formed in the dunes. So first you have a barren land. Yeah? Here you have the dunes. And then uh, people, they walk along the dunes and uh, as many people take the same path, the same route, a path is formed, as you see in the second picture. And then at some point, it actually becomes uh, obligatory to follow that path. So you can't choose to follow another path. And then yeah, a rule is formed, which uh, everybody has to respect and abide by. Um, so let's now go into the law more specifically. Customary international law consists of two elements that both always need to be established. Uh, there must be a state practice and this must be accompanied by an opinion juris. So in the remainder of this knowledge clip, I wanted to, to look with you at these two elements. Uh, begin with state practice. So the state practice uh, has to be extensive, and this means that it must include many states, uh, especially those uh, particularly affected by the rule. So if there is a uh, custom on the uh, use of a particular natural resources, then of course we are interested in the practice of the states that actually have these natural resources. Um, the practice must be uh, consistent and uniform. And so the practice of the states must be consistent and uniform whenever the circumstances present themselves. Uh, no particular duration is required. And so we don't need to wait for the lapse of a certain period of time before we can speak of a custom. Uh, there is also such a thing as instant custom, so custom that is formed almost instantly. Um, so let's look at uh, state practice with the help of a few uh, examples from the ICJ case law. Let's first look at the asylum case, a case between Peru and Colombia. Uh, it was about a, a revolution uh, led by this man, uh, Victor Raúl Jair La Torre. Uh, his revolution failed, uh, so he fled um, from the authorities and he, sook re he sought refuge in the Colombian embassy in Lima. And then Colombia wanted Peru to allow him safe passage out of Peru, but Peru refused. And then uh, the question put to the court was whether there is a rule requiring Peru to allow uh, Haya de la Torre to leave the country. Um, well, the court looked at the state practice and found so much uncertainty and contradiction, so much fluctuation and discrepancy, that it was not possible to discern in all this any constant and uniform usage accepted as law. So no consistent and uniform state practice. In any case, added the court, a customary rule, if established, uh, could not be invoked against Peru, which, far from having by its attitude adhered to it, has, on the contrary, repudiated it. So Peru has consistently, persistently objected to this uh, rule, as it was in the process of formation, a, a failed formation, of course, uh, due to the lack of consistent practice in any case. But here the court acknowledged the possibility of persistent objection, a way to opt out of a, a customary rule at the time of its formation. Let's look at another case, case between Nicaragua and the United States. 
Um, one of the questions here was whether there was a customary norm which prohibits one state from interfering in the internal affairs of another. And so did uh, the US in, uh, breach this rule uh, by assisting the Contras, the uh, Contras the rebels, the FDN active uh, in Nicaragua trying to overthrow the Nicaraguan government. Um, so the court again looked at a state practice and actually it found that uh, many states intervened in the internal affairs of other states. So does that then defeat the customary norm? Well, the court said we, know, we don't need absolute rigorous conformity with the rule. Uh, it is sufficient that the conduct of states should in general be consistent with the customary rule. And if a state acts in a way prima facie incompatible with a recognized rule, but defends its conduct by appealing to exceptions or justifications contained within the rule itself, or if instances of state conduct inconsistent with a given rule are generally treated as breaches of that rule uh, rather than indications of the recognition of a new rule, then uh, this customary rule is not challenged. So if uh, states that act inconsistent with the rule uh, try to find excuses for their behavior, and if such uh, conduct is also condemned by the other states of the international community, then of course that only uh, reinforces, strengthens the customary norm. Uh, besides state practice, uh, we also need to look at the second element, opinio juris. Uh, which we can define as a belief that the practice is rendered obligatory by the existence of a rule of law requiring it. So uh, the difficulty of establishing opinion juris, I can explain to you with the help of the Lotus case, a very old case involving uh, France and Turkey uh, about the collision of a French steamer. Here you see pictures of the French steamer with a Turkish vessel, the Boscourt. Um, and this happened on the high seas. So these two uh, ships collided and then Turkey arrested the uh, French officer of the watch and took this uh, man uh, before its uh, criminal justice system. So Turkey prosecuted a French national for crimes committed on the high seas. Uh, France uh, alleged that uh, Turkey was not allowed to do this that there was a uh, prohibition uh, to prosecute uh, foreign nationals for crimes committed on the high seas. And France could actually show that there were very little such prosecutions. So there was a constant practice of not prosecuting foreign nationals for crimes committed on the high seas. But according to the court, uh, that was not enough because uh, such practice, the existence of such practice would merely show that states had often in practice abstained from instituting criminal proceedings, but not that they recognize themselves as being obliged to do so. For only if such abstention were based on their being conscious of having a duty to abstain, would it be possible to speak of an international custom. So France not only had to show that there was a consistent practice of not prosecuting foreign nationals for crimes committed on the high seas, but France also had to convince the court that states did not do so out of a sense of legal obligation. Uh, finally, I wanted to um, say something about the importance of General Assembly resolutions uh, as evidence of, or as uh, support for uh, a, an emerging opinion juris, because uh, General Re Assembly resolutions are often referred to in this way. So despite there being than being legally non-binding, uh, General Assembly resolutions can, in certain circumstances, provide evidence important for establishing the existence of a rule or the emergence of an opinio juris. So if uh, the General Assembly uh, constantly reaffirms the, exist uh, the existence of a certain rule, uh, then we need to find the accompanying state practice and then we could speak of the establishment of a customary rule. Thank you for your attention.